Do you want to know how to breed crickets, mealworms or even woodies for your pet lizards, turtles, fish or maybe even pet ants? In this video we will cover everything you need to know to get started so you can breed your very own feeder insects. But first, welcome to another episode of The Ant Keeper where I upload every week about all things ant related. If you find yourself enjoying this video then subscribe and join the AK Colony. Your support really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Also, I want to officially announce here on the channel my new logo. Thanks to the help of a designer, I can present this new logo that I'm very proud of. The logo and banner is based of a green weaver ant and a tropical jungle. I love how this has turned out. The end result has exceeded my expectations. I'm going to talk about each feeder insect separately. Mealworms first, and then crickets, and last woodies. To begin your own breeding program, you will have to buy some stock to get started. I recently bought most of my stock from Crazy Critters. They're an Australian company that was recommended to me from someone in the AK colony. Their products are great quality, arrived on time and had amazing prices. I'm not affiliated with this company or any other, maybe one day, but if you're from down under, check them out. Mealworms are a great choice for your pets and they're easy to breed. The mealworm is part of the life cycle that eventually metamorphosizes into a black beetle. When you buy your first batch of stock, they'll likely arrive in a container full of some sort of soft substrate. Depending on the size of the mealworms will dictate what you have to do with them first. If they're small, it's best to store them in a small plastic container, like the one they arrived in, with a good layer of oats. The oats will act as a source of substrate and they'll eat it for food too. I also like to place in root vegetables for the worms to eat too. Veggies like carrots take longer to go moldy compared to wet foods and they're easier to pick out and clean. I replace the food items twice a week to keep everything clean. The mealworms will get moisture from the carrots during this time. Notice before how I said put the mealworms in a plastic container? This rule applies for any feeder insect in this video. Always store them in either plastic or glass containers with some sort of air hole or ventilation to breathe. Otherwise it will get really, really smelly. Once the mealworms are big enough, place them in a small container with a lid like this. Put a small hole at the top and don't place any food in here. Soon the mealworms will turn into a pupa, the next stage of their life cycle. Once you have placed all your mealworms in containers, put them in the box and store them away. They must be kept somewhere dark, dry and out of sunlight. Two to three weeks later they'll pupate and will be ready to be placed into a new container where the beetles will emerge. It's important to place the beetles into a container quickly as they might start feeding on the pupa around them. The beetles love to climb too, so get a new box and place some cardboard or egg cartons and maybe even some paper rolls in there since they love to climb. The beetles will emerge lightly coloured and soft for the first couple of weeks until they darken in colour. Once they darken in colour, they will be active and sexually mature. Again I offer carrots as food. It's about $1 for a kilo of carrots, so this works for me. Over the next 4-6 to six weeks, the beetles will lay eggs in the oats. After the 6 week mark, pick out all the beetles and put them into a new container with oats and substrate and put that cardboard swing set back in there too. The old substrate left behind, all the bits of oats and debris left over, is full of the next generation of mealworms. Place the old oats into a container and add thin slices of carrots across the area. Since the baby mealworms are small, they will struggle to get to the food. So make it easy for them. Soon you'll see hundreds if not thousands of baby worms growing and feeding and you will have created an unlimited amount of mealworms for your pets. Crickets are my personal favourite insect to grow and the one I've had the most practice with. First, we need to prepare the home for the crickets. Get yourself a large tub like this one and put in a small container filled with soil. This is where the crickets will lay their eggs. i found sometimes the crickets will dig up the dirt, so if you can, get some fly screen and put that over the top of it just so it sits on top of the soil. 
that will stop the crickets from digging up and possibly eating the eggs. Next, place egg cartons for the crickets to hide in. Whatever you do, don't get the cardboard wet, otherwise the crickets will eat this and it will go really yucky. Next, place in a wet sponge on a lid of a container, or if you're an egg keeper like me, get a 20mm test tube set up and that works perfect too. This is what the crickets will use to drink. If you give the crickets half a chance, they'll drown in the shallowest water you can imagine. For food, you could use lettuce or carrots. Guess which one I use? Yeah. Really, you want anything that doesn't go moldy too quickly and has some sort of moisture content. Citrus fruit is a nice option too, since it makes everything smell a little nicer. But then you associate oranges with crickets every time you eat one. So, keep that in mind. After 10 days have passed, take the soil out of the container, take off the fly screen mesh, and put it inside a new container. Gently spray the soil with water, and soon tiny little crickets will emerge. Then make up some new soil and put that into the old container that's full of crickets. It's that easy. Just like that, you create more crickets than you'll know what to do with. Woodies are by far the hardest to get right, since they are less tolerable to variables. To get started, get yourself a container and fill it with cardboard pieces. I don't have a lid for this tank that will keep the woodies out securely, so I'm going to apply a flu on barrier around the top edge. This barrier stops insects from crossing it. Similar to the crickets, place the water and food onto a dish of a rimmed container. I like using carrots. Who knew, right? <laughs> their substrate is the same as their food, just like mealworms and oats. Instead of oats though, we're going to use dog biscuits. I just crush up smaller pieces and sprinkle that at the bottom. Or if you have a mother-in-law, use her cooking instead. I add new dog food every week and replace the carrots and container twice a week to keep things fresh. It's important to keep everything dry and preferably a little humid. Over time, you suppress any healthy fear of cockroaches and the woodies will eat the dog food and lay egg cases in the egg cartons. Once you begin to notice the egg cases, you can do one of two things. You can either leave the woodies in with the eggs that will eventually hatch, risking the adult cockroaches eating the nymphs, or you can separate them before the nymphs hatch. I haven't found an easy way of separating them, other than picking them out into a new tank. If you have successfully bred feed the cockroaches, I'd love to know your method for separating them. When breeding any animal, it's important to remember to outcross the gene pool with woodies in particular are susceptible to defects from inbreeding. It's super easy to add new genes into your stock. Every couple of generations, buy a box of new stock from a supplier and add that to your setup. This will help keep your insects fertile, healthy, and less problematic. I'm sure you'd agree that feeding your pets a varied diet is an important part of good husbandry. Likewise, remember that even though you're breeding these insects for pet food, feeding a varied diet will surely generate a healthy stock which will in turn make your pets healthier too. I'm still learning every day with breeding my feeder insects and making adjustments to my methods along the way. Learning any new skill takes time and to develop a full rotation of the life cycle, that is to start producing thousands of your own insects will take months. That being said, breeding mealworms, crickets and woodies is a great investment that will save you money. I hope this quick guide will help you get started on your own journey with breeding feeder insects. If you made it this far, then make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out. Also, have you subscribed and become part of the AK colony? If you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe and be a part of one of the fastest growing colonies here on YouTube. There are so many little tips and tricks with breeding feeder insects. Share yours in the comment section below. Thank you everyone for watching this week's episode. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, and keepers unite.